morning, saints. First, give an honor to God who's the head of my life, and to Pastor Rogers, First Lady Dora Rogers, Pulpit, uh, Mother Dandridge, uh, Missionary Hobbs, and her Missionary Hobbs, uh, Deacon Davis, this afternoon, and the First Administrator. We're here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're here today to praise the Lord, as uh, Elder Roger said earlier. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Amen. We got the men's on parade today. All right. Let's get praise for that. I'd like to thank the praise team, team for that. Amen. Those selections. Amen. Now, next we will have in this order prayer by Deacon William Lewis, a solo by Elder Franklin Vanderbilt, an announcement by Sister June Rogers in that order. Amen. Yeah. That's my testimony. 
Lord Jesus. Give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What a appropriate selection. He is worthy. I said he is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Okay, wow. next. Next, we're going to have our own pastor come up, and he will be in charge for the rest of the program. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will somebody put those blessed hands together and give God some praise in this house? Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Are there any glad hearts in the house on the day? Listen, women, I know you're used to the amen. Carrying on, amen, on another level. Amen. But the brethren, amen, are going today. Amen. We might not sound like you all do. Amen. But we sure appreciate a hallelujah. We appreciate a, a go ahead. We appreciate say a word, son. Amen. We need your encouragement on today. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but when I of the Lord. And I just start thinking on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. How far he's brought me. What he's taught me. How he needs me. How he guides me. I can't help but to throw up my hand.
somebody know that if God don't touch us, that if God's hand of grace and mercy don't touch us and allow us to rise, our bed could be our cooling board. But I thank God. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. He's good. He's good. When you enter into here, you got to forget about everything that the enemy has tried to weigh you down with just so that you couldn't make it. But just the fact that you made it through those doors, we owe God our best praise. Somebody put those hands together and give God a thank you. We owe God. We owe God this morning. He's worthy of the praise. Thank you, Deacon Butler. Thank you, Ella Rogers, for reminding us, amen, while we're here, we come to praise God. We come to magnify God. Amen. Thank you, praise leaders. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give our men, amen, a hand praise. Amen. Leading out in our service on today. Amen. Thank God for the men of the church. Amen. Yes, we know, amen. Amen. If there were no women here, I'd probably find somewhere else to go to church. Amen. But I thank God for the, I thank God for the men today here as well. Now, can I be honest with you all on today? I think something is wrong if there were no women here. Amen, somebody. Y'all don't have to say it. Amen. I say amen all by myself. Amen. I thank God for the women of the church. Amen. What you all don't know, amen. The women birthed a lot of our churches out. The women prayed a lot of our churches out. Amen. And then the leadership, amen, sent a pastor there to carry on. Amen. So that's the reason why I say what I say. Thank God for the women. Amen. But the brothers are in charge on the day. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the men of our church leading out. Amen. And certainly, amen, we owe God. We owe God. We are indebted to God. There are just so many great and wonderful things that are happening around ministry. Amen. Even in times, amen, of doing things, amen, like we have never done it before. Amen. We're on uncharted territory now in Greater New Bible Way. This is uncharted territory. Amen. It's not business as usual. But I tell you all what, the Lord is leading, isn't he? The Lord is guiding, isn't he? Amen. That's the reason why we're still standing today. Because we're holding his hand as he leading, as he guided, as he Amen. Order our steps. Amen. Come on, thank the Lord one more time. Again, we thank God for all the leadership of the church. Amen. Amen. That those, amen, have already been acknowledged on today. We thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for our, amen, our viewing audience. Amen. Come on, let's thank God again for our virtual audience on today. Amen. We hope, amen, you feel what we feel, amen, here in this sanctuary. Because the power of God is certainly here. Amen. And we're getting ready to go up even higher. We're getting ready to go higher. Amen. We have a man of God that is getting ready to come. Amen. And speak a word, amen, to us on today. Amen. That I know, amen, that he loves God with all of his heart. He's a family man. He's a businessman. Amen. Amen. He means this church 100%. I'll say that again. He means this church 100%. 
there's no doubt in my mind that he loves, amen, this ministry here, amen, because he gives everything that he has, amen, to continue, amen, to allow us to get the gospel out, amen, amen, so we thank God, amen, he's the first administrative assistant, amen, of this church, amen, and he wears so many other hats, amen, I'm not going to go through that, amen, but I believe that God has given him a word that will encourage, amen, the body of Christ at large on today, amen, and I want you to listen attentively, amen, to what the Lord has given unto him, amen, to tell the church on today, amen, but before our own Deacon Stephen Jackson comes, amen, we will have a Song, solo, a song of praise. Amen. It's coming. Amen. Are we ready for the word? We ready for, come on, clap your hands. We ready for the word. Amen. Amen. If you would with me, amen. Everybody stand all over the building. We're standing all over the building. Amen. For this great man of God. Will you help me say thank God for Deacon Jackson. Come on, thank God for Deacon Jackson. Now one more time for the Holy Ghost, say thank God for Deacon Jackson. Put your hands together, amen, and receive this man of God on today. Lord, we thank you on this morning. Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your people on this morning. You're a wonderful God. Lord, we thank you for this church. Lord, we ask a special favor this morning for Sister Jean Smith on this morning. Touch her, Lord. Oh God, we hear and we pray that you will touch the hearers and doers of your word. We ask forgiveness from you first. And we ask for forgiveness from anyone that we have offended on this morning. Anoint now in Jesus' name. While you are yet standing, please grab your Bibles. We're going to go to the scripture, for me, scripture of our past founder, Superintendent Rochester Wright. That's uh, Haggai 1 and 2. Haggai 1 and 2. Our current pastor, I think he come off of that particular scripture, that book himself. Haggai 1 and 2 does speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, this people says, the time not come, the time that the Lord house should be built. You may be seated. The house has been addressed, so I don't know how long this going to be. Y'all bear with me. God gave me this. And when God gives you something, you just take it and run with it. You have to obey but the house has been addressed, but we thank God for being so awesome. We thank God for our pastor and first lady. And thank God for Assistant Pastor White and, and everyone on the sound of my voice. I do thank God for my own wife, my helper, Sister Jackson. She, she had to work a lot of <laughs> my visions. <laughs> and the Lord does give me visions. And I try to be obedient to what the Lord tells me. And you know, to have a wife with you, and you spending your money and your time, she had to be a good helpmate. And I, I'm talking also about my baby girl that's at home sick, and y'all pray for her, and now you give it to Jackson. She's a helpmate too, whether she want to or not. <laughs> God is good on this morning. But anyway, um, in my training, 
I've learned that you do have to analyze the people that you're talking to. In other words, if you all are into something other than what I'm here for this morning, I'm wasting everybody's time. But on this morning, to analyze you this morning, I, I do have a series of questions. But first, I want you to know that God shows us miracles all the time. You woke up this morning was a miracle, but we take it for granted. Your heart beating right now is a miracle. A lot of beats are going on, a lot of miracles are going on. God is good, even though we take him for granted. The next breath you take and all the ones you've already taken are miracles. God is a good God on this morning. But I still have to analyze you guys and make sure that y'all are here with me today and we are on the same thing this morning or I'm going to have to leave. I won't ask you to leave. I'm going to leave. <laughs> is that all right? But the first question would be, is, do you love the Lord on this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, do you love the Lord on this morning? Yes. If you love the Lord on this morning, I'm starting to think I'm in the right place this morning, Missionary Brian. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm in the right place. Another question is, do you love your church on this morning? Yes. I believe I'm about in the right place. I'm starting to believe that yes, we are going to be uh, able to agree on this morning. Yes, the next and final question is, and I do want you to signify your answer by, I'm going to ask you, do anyone got a job on this morning? If you got a job, just raise your hand. Amen. If you have a job, raise your hand. Look like we got about 30% of that so much. We might got 30%, but okay, then thank you very much. That was a very important question. Children, I want y'all to pay attention too, because this is an important question. It's such an important question, I'm going to have to ask it again, because I do want to get this question right. This question I asked, I asked you, did you have a job on this morning? I, I, I want to read a scripture before you answer this time. First John and 4, Missionary Brian, thank you for this scripture, said often and most of the time, God bless you. First John and 4, I must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, the night is coming when no man can work. Now, you think about that question just a little bit more because I told you it's an important question. And we don't get this question right. I'm going to have to sit down and have Pastor Rogers come down and preach the rest of this service. If he don't preach, one of the elders is going to have to come because I'm not qualified. We need some help up in here, up in here. Okay. On this question, once again, I'm going to pose it to you. I'm going to pose it to you, and this time, I want you to signify that you have a job this morning. I want you to get to your feet, raise both hands, and praise the Lord. Do you have a job on this morning? Do you have Some people know the Bible, 
but don't know Jesus. Some people know the Bible, but they don't know Jesus. Let me, let me explain that to you. Let me explain that to you. We all are in that way at times. We all, it's called sin. It's called sin. But some people know the Bible. All of us. We know so much. But we don't know Jesus. You know, Elder White, I mean, Elder Bird strips this morning confirmed me on today. He was talking about instructions. And you know, the acronym for Bible is, is it, what is it? Somebody say it loud. All right, then. We got instructions on how to act. Some know the Bible, but at times they don't know Jesus. Now, I came from Haggai. And I want to read that scripture again, and you can stay seated. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord house shall be built. And then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? Some Bibles say pound houses. In this house lie waste. Some say the ruins. Now therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earn his wages, put it into a bag with holes. Is that not right? Deacon, uh, Deacon Davis, is that not right? Yes. That's one of the deacons. That would make him a tie pair. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thus said the Lord of hosts, yes, sir. consider your ways. Consider your ways. The Babylonians were in exile in the past for a long time. The Lord put in their spirit to build a temple. After 16 years, they had not completed that temple. 16 years, I don't know how long it should have taken, but evidently the Lord thought it was too long. They allowed their personal lives to draw them from God's business. The Lord touched Haggai as a messenger and got into Haggai's spirit and Haggai preached to the nation. He preached fiery sermons. He called the builders to renew courage in the Lord, renew holiness of life, and renew faith in God who controls the future. Remember that. God controls the future. I, I hate to inform you on this morning, the pastor started off by being true. Truthful, many of us are not good stewards of God's belongings. Come on now. I'm just saying. We had the same spirit as the Babylonian had years ago. That same spirit is, is running around rampant on today. God's temple needs to be taken care of. But we support God's temple with a whole lot of excuses and no action. God is an action God. I want y'all to know that on this morning. If he wouldn't be, all those miracles that he been created and still creating would not be here on the day. God is an action God. He's not an excuse God. God believes in working hard. He believes in doing a good job. Don't you know the job that you're working even in the corporate world that you're representing God on this morning? That's right. You represent God. God believes in doing a good job. Amen. I found out from many years of training, military training, but I want you to understand that the civilians train the military. That employers look for certain characteristics in employees, other words, workers. 
And we all alluded earlier that we are, we do have a job, so that means that we are workers, are employers, employees of God. Is that all right? right? Stay with me. Stay with me. These employees that the supervisor look at, that the employer look at, the uh, best way to describe them is in, in some words. I'm going to say a series of words. I won't get into the definition. All right. The reason being is because they self-explanatory. Yes, Employers love go-getters. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Employers love self-starters. Yes, they love motivated individuals. Yes, sir. An individual with integrity. They love those. Yes, sir. They love you to be focused on their mission. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They love people that require just a little supervision. Yes, Supervisors look for these traits. That's right. yes. Even when it, they determine whether they want to fire or hire you, they're looking at these traits. Yes. If these traits are in you, you will gain favor in the workforce. Yes, I would say in God's force too, but I haven't got to that part yet. You will get the biggest raises, you will get the promotions, and you will get good jobs. I got to go back to somewhere I forgot. Uh, children, if you are here and y'all want to hear about the latest electronics, y'all going to fall asleep a little earlier than you normally do. I'm just saying, I forgot that part. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I want to do a mock uh, evaluation. Anybody ever been evaluated? Right. Put it right here. Anybody ever been evaluated uh, to receive a job or you own a job and um, they telling you how you're doing or how things going? I, I, I thought about putting somebody turned around that way and face me. That's correct. I thought about putting somebody in that chair, but I'm going to put so much pressure on that chair that <laughs> I said, I bet I put nobody in that chair. <laughs> Y'all start looking at that person funny or something. But anyway, uh, let's take this chair here. He's working a job, and I'm going to come up with my own business. I'm going to say uh, Big Burger House. That chair working at the Big Burger House. I hope I'm not making nobody hungry on this morning. <laughs> the Big Burger House. Oh, Mr. Chair, we thank, thank you for coming in today. We just uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you've been doing. Y'all remember those words, uh, go-getter, self-starter, motivated, integrity, focused, require a little supervision. Mr. Chair, uh, we noticed we have to come in the break room to get you started on your job. Mr. Chair is not a go-getter, and he's definitely not a self-starter. Mr. Chair, uh, we, allow, uh, we understand that you allow everyone else to do your work. Mr. Chair, you definitely not motivated. Uh, Mr. Chair, here at Big Burger House, we greet all the customers and keep all the areas clean. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't think you focus on Big Burger House mission on this morning. All right. Uh, we thank you, Mr. Chair, for not all the time letting your uh, co-workers sign you in and clock you in. We thank you for that. We thank you that you clock yourself in sometime. But, but we, we have noticed, Mr. Chair, that you stop work 30 minutes early every day. I would say, Mr. Chair, lack a little integrity here. And Mr. Chair, I, I want to thank you for following your co-workers' lead when they're cleaning up the place. Mr. Chair, need a lot of supervision. <laughs> Mr. Chair, we thank you so much for allowing me this time. I have to inform you, Mr. Chair, we have to let you go. <laughs> if we can use you, we will call you at a later date. <laughs> Ooh, I would hate to be in Mr. Chair's situation. I would hate to be there. What am I trying to say? These same qualities need to be used in God's house. I'm just saying. 
I'm just saying, let me bring it home a little bit more to you. I'm going to put myself in that seat because I don't mind. I'm man enough to take it. And you know what? I don't mind being looked at and told different things to do if it'll get me closer to the kingdom of God. I don't mind being told or chastised to do something if it'll get me close to God. Because you see, I'm not so holy that I know that I'm not right all the time. But somebody tell me how I can get closer to God and I'm willing to do just that. But as, have a seat, have a seat. Let me put myself in that chair now. Y'all just pray for me as I'm in that chair, okay? Just pray for me. Uh, Deacon Jackson, come on in and have a seat. We thank you for being on the deacon board. But we notice you only do what we ask. No more and no less. Uh, I think Deacon Jackson is not much of a go-getter. Uh, Dick Jackson, you have not suggested any new soul winning ideas. Also, I have to remind you of all your scheduled programs and all your services. Uh, Deacon Jackson, he's not a self starter. Deacon Jackson, I, I see you come in late and leave early. You don't help do things around the church. I know you told me whatever I need, just ask. But yet you also told me that you were a busy man. And then you told me about all your elements, your back, your blood pressure, and your sugar and everything else. Well, I don't ask you anything because I don't want to overburden you. But Deacon Jackson, you need to understand that whatever gift you possess, then use that gift for the glory of God. But needless to say, Deacon Jackson is not motivated on this morning. Y'all pray for me. Pray for Deacon Jackson. Deacon Jackson, I, I noticed you are a tide payer. I noticed you tip the Lord. You must don't trust the Lord. You are not obedient to pledge requests. Your support is minimum toward the deacon assets.
practice lawlessness. Can you imagine my response for that to that statement? Lord, one more change. Lord, I'll change my ways on this morning. Lord, there's one more chance. Oh, God, uh, YWCC, uh, Lord, one more chance. Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. Lord, CWC, Lord, there's one more chance. Lord, I know the Bible and I know you. Lord, there's Use me. Alcohol. Lord, I know the Bible. And I know you. Use me, Lord. Drugs, oh Lord. I know the Bible. And I know you. Use me, Jesus. Lord, more power on this morning. Lord, I need more power. I need Holy Ghost power. Lord, I will be obedient to you. Just touch me, Lord. One more chance, Jesus. Lord, I will join the mothers on Tuesday morning prayer. Just touch me, Lord. Lord, I will support Sunday school. Touch me and give me more power, Jesus. Lord, I know the Bible. And I want to know you, Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Touch me, Jesus. I will work for the ministry, Lord. Lord, I know the Bible, and I know you, Jesus. Lord, I want to love right. Lord, I want to talk right. Lord, I want to walk right. Lord, I want to live right. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Help me do the right thing. Help me do the right thing. Help me. Y'all help me now. Jesus. 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 Feel me, Lord. Feel me today, Lord. With the Holy Ghost in us. With the Holy Ghost, Lord. Because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our service. 